Hello and welcome to NDTV 24-7. I'm Rohit Wellington. Let's begin with our top story, which is the hearing over air pollution in the Supreme Court. The court said that Delhi is choking and asked for emergency measures. The government must persuade farmers against double burning. That's what the Supreme Court said as it stressed that it does not want to punish them. The Chief Justice of India said that people sitting in five-star hotels in Delhi blame farmers. Delhi is choking. The Supreme Court said this today as it pulled up the central and state governments for their inaction in tackling the air pollution disaster year after year. A three-judge special bench led by the Chief Justice while hearing Delhi student Aditya Dubey's plea seeking court monitoring of Delhi NCR pollution said, the bureaucracy has developed an inertia. They want everything to be done by the court, from water sprinkling to stopping fires and so on. It is unfortunate. Every year in October and November, the Supreme Court is compelled to take steps when Delhi starts choking. Delhi government banned firecrackers. The onus is on them to implement it. Can you deny that firecrackers have been used in the last five to six days? <laughs> A key argument today was the contribution of stubble burning, primarily in Punjab and Haryana. The centre today said it was wrongly accused by the petitioner of misleading the court and said the figure is 35 to 40 percent for October and November. On Monday, the centre's lawyer said it was 10 percent and its affidavit puts it even lower. The Delhi government argues stubble burning contributes to more than half of the capital's pollution, but the court rejected these arguments. We do not want to penalize the farmers. Debates on TV are causing more pollution than any other source. Everyone has their own agenda there. Here we are trying to find solutions. The court also said, irrespective of figures in the affidavit, the plight of farmers remains unresolved. Nobody is concerned about what compels them to burn stubble, People sitting in five-star hotels in Delhi blame farmers. The Punjab government has left the farmers upon the mercy of God and has told them to stop burning the stubble but provided no alternative. Delhi government keeps quoting Pusa Research Institute study but there are already reports saying that the method is a failure. The court has also asked the central government to consider providing common pick-up and drop services to its employees and asked Delhi government to add more CNG buses in order to reduce the number of private vehicles on the roads. The next hearing of the case will take place on Tuesday. Till then, the Supreme Court has asked the centre as well as state governments to comply with all the measures that have been declared by the Commission for Air Quality Management. In New Delhi with camera person Sushil Rathi, this is Sukit Tidwedi for NDTV. And not just Delhi, air pollution levels have peaked in Mumbai, according to the data from air quality monitoring agencies Suffer. Specific locations like Kolaba and Mazgaon have been the worst hit over the last few days. Saurabh Gupta reports. Pockets of Mumbai reporting poor air quality, which means it's harmful for children and the elderly. Kolaba had an AQI of 300 and Mazgaon was at 295. But overall, the city air is still moderate. The figures are an improvement over yesterday when it was over 301, which means prolonged exposure can cause respiratory illness. Mumbai being a coastal city has less pollution than say Delhi or Kanpur. But emissions combined with humidity and a lack of winds from the sea have driven up the levels over the last couple of days. Those stations which are very close proximity with the uh, sea uh, and uh, where there is a lot of other greenery is there, there the temperature drops. Uh, much cooler as compared to city areas and the humidity is also become very high when humidity becomes high air becomes very heavier and it uh, its capacity to hold the small particles increases and that is one of the reasons that uh, some of the areas are showing uh, very air, very poor air quality in mumbai like kolaba pollution level will decrease further tomorrow so we end up say 35 40 km per hour definitely it won't allow the uh, particulate matter to stay at, a, at, at, a, at some place. Authorities in Mumbai say they are already converting the fleet of public buses to electric to cut pollution and have launched a climate action plan as well to move to clean energy and cut emissions. One of the major factors why Mumbai perhaps does better than Delhi is in terms of culture. Now in this city a lot of people depend on public transport, the local trains, 
you know, may not be that comfortable, but definitely more environment friendly. Well, overall, the air quality for Mumbai remains moderate and much better than what it is in Delhi. Certain measuring stations are reporting a high amount of PM 2.5, which is a key contributor to air pollution. And the solution, experts say, will come from the sea in the form of winds and perhaps some showers as a depression forms in the Arabian Sea. In Mumbai with camera person Praveen G. Rohit, Saurabh Gupta, NDTV. The other big story, new satellite images tweeted out by a global researcher on Chinese military development show purported construction of Chinese villages in Bhutanese territory. The area lies on disputed land between Bhutan and China near Doklam that showed construction activity in the period between 2020 and 2021. Vishnu Shom has more. These images have actually come out uh, in a tweet by Dietresfa, somebody who follows the, in fact, the India-China boundary dispute very, very closely, and also the entire region, including Bhutan, uh, who's accessed high-resolution satellite images. Let's change the image. Uh, this is for the Intel Lab. The Intel Lab is a collection of some very uh, OSINT workers uh, who actually are, who look at um, intelligence science, who look at satellite imagery, and piece together what they're seeing on the basis of that. And the bottom line over here is that India has been a net security provider for Bhutan. But that situation started changing over the last several years. In 2017, India and Bhutan, uh, India and China had a standoff in the Doklam region, which is just a little to the southwest of this particular area, where China has sliced off a massive land, amount of the land of, uh, of Bhutan in territory, which it claims but Bhutan disputes. But in 2017, India and China had the Doklam dispute. India stopped China's road building activity. But that didn't appear to stop China at all. Last year, we reported about how the Chinese had bypassed Indian defenses to have road and village construction a short distance away, cutting through Bhutanese territory. There are also clear signs now that Thimphu has had no option and that they've given in to what China has demanded, that there is some sort of a larger agreement which has been reached. What is that larger agreement? What are the contours of that? We do not know. A new U.S. travel advisory for India has said that single women should not travel alone to India amid concerns over violent crimes like rapes at tourist places. Since U.S. travel advisories are widely referred to, the latest one is bad news for multiple tourist destinations across India that are now expecting the arrival of foreign tourists after two years of the COVID pandemic. A new U.S. travel advisory asking single women not to travel alone in India is worrying the tourism business in top destinations like Varanasi and Agra. They are still awaiting foreign tourists after a two-year COVID-induced gap and now this. The U.S. advisory says Indian authorities report rape is one of the fastest growing crimes in India. Violent crimes such as sexual assault has occurred at tourist sites and in other locations. A similar advisory had been issued by the U.S. in 2019, but the stakes are higher for tourist places right now because of losses during the COVID pandemic. At Varanasi's famous Assi Ghat, Medagiri Verma, a Mehendi artist, hopes the advisory will not prevent foreign tourists from visiting Varanasi. <laughs> Tourism industry economy को बहुत अच्छा बहुत मतलब अच्छे level पे contribute करता है और अगर ऐसी advisories होंगी तो ये चीजें हमें हमारी economy को भी affect करेंगी और अच्छा मतलब जो यहाँ पे local लोग हैं आप देखें होंगे कई सारे लोग दुकानें लगाते कई सारे लोगों के घर चलता है livelihood है According to the latest report by the National Crime Records Bureau, three foreign tourists were murdered in 2020 across India as compared to nine such murders in 2019, a pre-pandemic year. 14 foreign tourists were allegedly raped in 2020, more than the nine rapes in pre-pandemic 2019. Tamil Nadu reported the highest cases of crime against foreigners, followed by Maharashtra and Karnataka. Here's a shocking statistic. By the end of 2020, a total of 79 rape cases against foreign tourists were under trial in various courts, including backlog cases. But there was a conviction in just one such case. 
At the Taj Mahal, many domestic tourists felt the government needs to make travel safer for single women. But tourism business persons at India's iconic attraction are worried. सही किया या गलत किया उस पर तो कॉमेंट नहीं कर सकते बट एज फीमेल हम अपनी कंट्री में खुद ही अकेले नहीं जाते द फर्स्ट स्टेप टूवर्ड्स वुमेन सिक्योरिटी जो कि है कि आप रात को 12 बजे 10 बजे आप अकेले घूम सको वो हमारे पास अभी एटलीस्ट नॉर्थ में तो नहीं है बहुत ज़्यादा इफेक्ट पड़ेगा क्योंकि जैसे अगर टूरिस्ट नहीं आता है तो देखिए अभी डेढ़ दो साल से तो वैसे ही काम खराब हो चुका है यहाँ पर द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया हैज नॉट रिस्पॉन्डेड टू द यू एस ट्रेवल एडवाइजरी सो फार With Ajay Singh, Naseem Ahmed and camera person Rajesh Gupta this is Alok Pandey in the TV. All right now in the battleground Uttar Pradesh Prime Minister Modi will be there in the state for the second time in 3 days the Prime Minister will launch development projects worth over 6000 crores in the pre-election blitz in UP 3250 crores for water projects in drought prone Bundelkhand after Purvanchal Prime Minister will be visiting Bundelkhand he will lay foundation stone for 3000 crore solar power plant in Jhansi Prime Minister will attend BJP election meeting in UP and will be at All India Police Chiefs meeting in Lucknow. Meanwhile, Samajwadi Party Chief Akhilesh Yadav was on Rath Yatra 2.0, which drew huge crowds. He spoke with NDTV's Srinivasan Jain. Modi ji, saying that if the Samajwadi Party comes, then there will be a king of the Samajwadi Party. There will be a king of the Samajwadi Party. There will be a king of the Samajwadi Party. Do you know that the Bharti Janta Party is not aware of it? कि कल जो पैदल चलने वाले मुख्यमंत्री थे कितने मुकदमे उनके ऊपर क्या मुख्यमंत्री कोई देश का कोई देश का मुख्यमंत्री ऐसा होगा जिसने अपने मुकदमे वापस लिए हों ये पहले मुख्यमंत्री हैं जिन्होंने अपने मुकदमे वापस लिए हैं और मैं आपको कह के जा रहा हूँ कि इसी पूर्वांचल से और इन्होंने दरवाजा खोला था बीजेपी का इन्होंने बीजेपी का दरवाजा खोला था यही दरवाजा बीजेपी का बंद करने जा रहे हैं Meanwhile, Congress leader Priyanka Gandhi Vadra was uh, in Chitrakoot district of Uttar Pradesh interacting with women by the river Ganga. कब तक आस लगाओगी तुम बिके हुए अखबारों से? इसका मतलब है कि तुम्हारी लड़ाई लड़ने के लिए कोई नहीं आ रहा है। तुम कब तक आस लगाओगी कि तुम तुम्हारी आवाज कोई और उठाएगा? हम्म? कैसी रक्षा मांग रही हो दुशासन दरबारों से? मतलब कि तुम कैसी रक्षा मांग रही हो उन लोगों से जो तुम्हारी रक्षा करेंगे ही नहीं जो तुम्हारा अत्याचार कर रहे हैं जो तुम्हारा शोषण कर रहे हैं नाउ टू जम्मू एंड कश्मीर द वीडियो ऑफ अ यंग कश्मीरी गर्ल वीपिंग ओवर हर फादर्स किलिंग ड्यूरिंग अ सिक्योरिटी ऑपरेशन ऑन मंडे इन जम्मू एंड कश्मीर हैज बीन वाइडली सर्कुलेटेड ऑन सोशल मीडिया द फैमिलीज ऑफ द बिजनेसमैन आर डिमांडिंग देयर बॉडीज द पुलिस मीन वाइल क्लेम टेरर लिंक्स फॉर किल्ड बिजनेसमैन मेरी कजन ने बोला उसको तीन बार ऊपर चढ़ाया जो कजन उधर पे था जो गवाही दे रहा था जो उसने देखा अपनी आंखों से तीन बार उसको ऊपर चढ़ाया तीन बार दो बार छोड़ा दो बार तीन बार मार दिया ये क्या मतलब होते हैं वो कहाँ से आप लोग Thirteen year old daughter of Altaf Bhatt describes the moment she learnt about the killing of her father, a businessman who was shot dead in a controversial encounter on Monday evening. The video has been widely shared on social media. Families of both businessmen, Altaf Bhatt and Dr. Mudassir Gul, killed in the encounter, are demanding their bodies be returned. The police buried them over a hundred kilometers away, citing law and order concerns. मैं अपने हस्बैंड की डेड बॉडी मांग रही हूँ बाकी मुझे कुछ नहीं देखो मुझे मेरे हस्बैंड की शक्ल देखो बस हमें और कुछ नहीं हम कुछ भी आर नॉट डिमांडिंग एनीथिंग वे आर ओनली डिमांडिंग जस्टिस हमारी सिर्फ एक ही डिमांड है कि हमारे अपनी लाश है वापस दे दीजिए फॉर्मर चीफ मिनिस्टर्स प्रोटेस्टेड एज वेल और ये सरकार इतनी जालिम है मारने के बाद उनकी डेड बॉडीज भी नहीं दे रही है तो हम यही कहते हैं की ये सिलसिला नहीं चलेगा इससे कश्मीर में हालात और खराब होंगे Omar Abdullah termed the denial of bodies to families for burial as a crime against humanity and Farooq Abdullah spoke to Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha demanding an impartial probe the family of one of the terrorists has alleged that the 24 year old was innocent that his father was an anti terrorist crusader recognized by the army but the police say that Amir was a hybrid terrorist a term coined for those who are not listed as terrorists in police records police say they recovered two pistols from the encounter site 
After killing of two businessmen in a controversial encounter in Srinagar, it is a struggle for the families to get dead bodies and a right to bury their dead. In Srinagar, Nazir Masoodi for NDTV. In some other news, Trinamool Congress MP Mahua Moitra has moved the Supreme Court against Centre's ordinance allowing five-year extension of tenure of CBI and ED directors. Let's go across to Sukirti Divedi for more on this. Sukirti, what more details can you share with us? Uh, well, yes, uh, this petition has been filed by TMC leader Mahua Moitra. She's an MP. Uh, now, there are some very major accusations that she is making in her petition. She says that Centre's ordinance is will allow it to extend the tenure of those ED and CBI directors who act in line with the government's preferences. Uh, this, these ordinances are against the independence of investigative agencies like CBI and ED. Uh, they attack their independence and impartiality. They violate the principles of fair investigation and fair trial. Uh, she's also challenged the constitutional validity of these centers, of these ordinances. She's saying they are contrary to certain uh, Supreme Court judgments that have recently come. There's a certain criteria that had been prescribed by the Supreme Court under which uh, extension could be given to officials. However, centers of ordinances are not in sync with those criteria as well. So she's questioning the constitutional validity and making major accusations that these ordinances will lead uh, to the attack on the independence and impartiality of both CBI as well as ED. Welcome back. Punjab Chief Minister has said that his government will cancel all police cases against farmers who burn stubble or agriculture waste. And uh, he's also said uh, that uh, he will be cancelling the cases filed during protests. Uh, those cases will also be dropped. Now, this decision comes months before an assembly election in which farmers will likely play a major role. किसी दे परचा है आग लाउंड लई वो ऐसी कैंसल कर रहे हैं लेकिन अग्गे नो मेरी किसाना नो बेंती है कि कोई भी किसान पराली नो आग ना लावे दे नाल प्रदूर्शन फैल दा है 